Hi and welcome to the videos for section 2.4 for Math 181. This is the first of two videos. Section 2.4, we look at the product and the quotient rules for derivatives. We're also going to look at the other derivatives for the trig functions. That'll wrap up this video. I'm going to kind of do it out of order from what the book has. The book starts with product rule, goes to quotient rule. But back when I was showing you guys some shortcuts, there was an example where I was able to introduce the quotient rule to you. So I'm going to just kind of go back over that, recall what the quotient rule is, then we'll deal with the product rule. So the quotient rule, <clears throat> and what I would tell you, or remind you, or reinforce, is that what? I told you guys, just remember the verbiage. What does the quotient rule say that we need to do? Don't worry about defining, this is my f function, this is my g function, and it's derivative of f times g minus g, derivative of, don't worry about any of that. You're going to confuse yourself worrying about which function is which. If you just remember it by the verbiage, all you got to do is work out those pieces. So the quotient rule was what? It's the derivative of the top. So the quotient rule, just as a reminder, this is when we have f of x is equal to some function in the numerator and some function in the denominator. So when I'm talking about top and bottom, it's the top piece or bottom piece. So derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So that's it. That's the heart of the quotient rule. Remember it by what am I supposed to do rather than trying to define functions and work the problem from there. <clears throat> the product rule, and again in the second video I work a bunch of examples. Um, so we'll do an example of product rule because I haven't introduced that to you before, but quotient rule, we already, we already saw a basic example, and again, in video two, I'm going to work a bunch of examples so you can get more practice then if, if you need it. Product rule, so this is what? Well, this is quotient rule we used when there was a quotient. We had a division of two uh, functions. Product rule is when we have two functions multiplied by each other. So quotient, we had a denominator. Product rule, we have a product, we're multiplying. So for example, if I had f of x is equal to x times sine of x. So this is one function, x. This is another function, sine of x. So you could whatever, call them g of x and h of x. So g of x is equal to x, h of x is equal to sine of x. We're multiplying them together. So to find the derivative, we would have to uh, deal with both of these functions individually. And again, I'm going to give you the verbiage of what to do and not the declaration of here's a function, here's another, what do we do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the product rule, the verbiage is as follows. It is the derivative of the first times the second. And by first and second, I'm talking about functions. So derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first times the derivative of the second. So 
So there is no denominator, so we don't have to worry about all over bottom squared, any of that. It's just a lot more straightforward. Take the derivative, multiply it by this, add it to this times the derivative of the second piece. So let's actually do that for this one. Let's say <clears throat> that f of x is equal to x sine of x. And so kind of use some different colors here to keep track. So as I said, this was our first function. We'll say that sine of x is our second function, green. So as we do a, a couple of these, I'll sort of break it out into parentheses. What am I taking the derivative of? What am I leaving the same? Um, and then as we get through them, I'll kind of just skip that step. So that if I want to take the derivative of this, f prime of x, is equal to, well, it's what? Derivative of the first, so that means I have x, and I want to take its derivative, so I'm going to call that whole thing prime, meaning take the derivative of what's inside these parentheses in a minute. So derivative of the first times the second, so just times sine of x, plus the first function, x, times the derivative of the second. So times sine of x take its derivative. And again, you don't have to do this every time. I'm just trying to show you what piece is what and how it corresponds to what we're doing. So that means what? Well, the derivative of x is just what? It's just 1. Uh, okay, let me go back to the colors here so you can keep track. So derivative of x is equal to 1 times sine of x, and then plus x times the derivative of sine of x. So remember back to the video for 2.3, derivative of sine of x is just equal to cosine of x. So now if I simplify this, I just get sine of x plus, and there's no minus signs to deal with here, so just plus x cosine of x. <clears throat> so if I have the function x sine of x, and I want to take its derivative, it's the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second, which gives me sine of x plus x cosine of x. So let me give you guys the... Uh, trig derivative of trig functions. So hopefully your instructor gives you guys a printout. I know like Dr. Uh, Warren, she gives the class a printout with all these different derivatives. If not, if your instructor doesn't, you're going to want to create a little cheat sheet for yourself. You're going to want to have these on there for quick reference. So we have the following. The derivative of trig functions So we have what? The derivative with respect to x for sine of x, well, we saw that last video, that's cosine of x. And also the derivative with respect to x of cosine of x, saw that last time, is minus sine of x. So that's where things stop being so nice for us. And this is why you kind of need a quick reference sheet. And I'll be honest with you, I don't have all these memorized. I usually have to go back and double check, make sure that what I'm putting down is the correct thing. So the derivative uh, with respect to x of tangent of x is equal to secant squared of x. The derivative with respect to x, well, sine is related to what? Cosine of x. So that's equal to minus cosecant x times cotangent of x. Like I told you, this gets messy. Derivative with respect to x of secant of x is equal to positive secant of x times tangent of x. And then lastly, derivative with respect to x of cotangent of x is equal to minus cosecant squared of x. So 
So there's a little bit of pattern. So tangent is secant squared. So for cotangent, it's cosecant squared, but we have to include the minus sign. Uh, again, cosecant has cosecant in it, but you also have to include cotangent. Secant has to include secant, you also include tangent. So again, my hope is that your instructor gives you these on an exam, on a quiz, you know, something like that, so you don't have to memorize these. But if you do, you know, try to find little, little tricks to help you. All right, so that is the end of the first video for section 2.4. Come on back in the second video. I'm just going to work examples from the book. A uh, bunch of different problems. Product rule, quotient rule, uh, some of these trig functions. Just to give you guys more practice, more of a reference. So if you're doing homework and you get stuck, maybe you can go back to one of these examples we're working and be like, oh, okay, I see how we get that. Uh, so come on back and we'll work those examples.